Look, it's got a little pouch. That's how you know it's for rich people. Hello guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. I honestly just haven't felt like filming. Um, as of late, I've been doing a lot of baking and a lot of Animal Crossing, and that's basically been my life. But you know what, today, I'm gonna jump back into it and we're gonna just play around with some new makeup. So basically I have this drawer that was that is filled with like unused makeup essentially and like stuff that I'm waiting to try. And I've been trying to like, it's mostly from like gratis from when I worked at Sephora, but I'm trying to like use up what I have before I dip into that drawer, but I'm obviously not using up what I have fast enough. And there's stuff in there that I really wanted to try. So today we're just gonna pull a few things out and give them a whirl. Um, a lot of these are quite, bougie. I think all of these are high-end, so um, yeah, so we're just gonna have some fun and play with some bougie makeup. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. Obviously, I changed my hair again. Um, <laughs> it's really short. I actually been loving it. I Today was the first day I tried curling it, which is interesting. Um, I've just been wearing it straight, so it looks a lot like sleeker when it's straight, but now I got this little vintage -y, style going on, which is kind of cute. So yeah, we're gonna roll with it and play with some makeup. I did moisturizer and sunscreen earlier, but I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of the Smashbox primerizer just to hydrate my skin. I did a little bit of self tanner last night. I, it actually doesn't look too bad except for like on my wrists, not to mention my hands are like so, 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 so dry from washing them so much. Um, I normally just do my legs, but I felt inclined to do my entire body last night. I don't know why. I, I don't I don't know. But anyways, I also burn myself with curling iron, so we're doing great. I'm actually gonna start out with brows. So I you know guys know that I love the Urban Decay brow pen. That's pretty much all I've been using. But lately I have been doing a little bit more of a structured brow, so I'm gonna try out the Hourglass um, Arch brow pencil. This is their one that's like it's got a nice little um little flat. Edge, so we're gonna try that out. I'm gonna zoom you in maybe just a smidge. It has been so incredibly beautiful in Washington I've just been enjoying the Sun like through my window and like the Sun um, In the afternoons comes into my bedroom, and it's like it's so nice We also redid our bedroom kind of we got our original plan was to do a new headboard um, But obviously we're not shopping for one right now So we just painted the one we had and it looks a lot better and we put new sheets on and stuff and it's a uh, it's really cute, so let's go in. So I'm just gonna start by brushing up the little hairs. Still definitely not as precise with the hairs as like my um, pen, but this is a really, really nice soft look and it actually matches my brow hair color quite nicely. I like the stiffness of this. It's It moves pretty easily, but it's not so creamy that I feel like it's going to like get everywhere. Yeah, I think that's quite nice for just a soft, quick little brow. I'm gonna go in with the pen. Just just a little bit, okay? Just right in here. It's really hard for me to get anything else to show up on that particular area of skin. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, I think that's passable. I did end up having to go in and fix the tail with the pen. I, I mean, it's, it's a nice little brow pencil. I don't think it's anything particularly revolutionary. I do like the kind of flat shape of it, although, over time, I do think it's gonna become more like domed. Um, I like the color, nothing too special here, to be honest, but it's pleasant. I'm just, I don't know, there's just, I find a pen so much easier to work with than a traditional brow pencil, but if you like brow pencils, you'll probably like it. Um, I am gonna go in with just a little bit of the Kush um, brow gel in Herb, just to kind of darken the hairs up a little bit. Um, now that I have darker hair, I like to kind of match the brow hair. Okay, I think that's enough fiddling with the brows. Um, I'm gonna go on to some eyeshadow. Um, so, I have this little Tom Ford quad. It's very bougie. Look, it's got a little pouch. That's how you know it's for rich people. So, yeah. It's really, really cute. Um, I don't know why it comes with these things. Um, it's just kind of a nice, neutral shadow look which you new guys know it's kind of my jam right now it's one of those ones where the packaging is so pretty that i just haven't want to dip a brush into it but you know what 
past, no time like the present. Um, I think these are all shimmers actually, which will be interesting and they're kind of satiny, um, but we're gonna, we're just gonna go for it. Um, do a little bit of the Urban Decay Primer in Eden. So like I said, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Um, this is actually the first game I've ever played, um, but my husband convinced me to buy it and it's a lovely, lovely game. It's such a calming and just fun, relaxing game and so good for right now. I just got meringue on my island. I'm very excited about that. And I finally, finally am getting the KK Slider concert. I know it took me forever. I did not try and travel. I don't know. Let me know down below what you guys, how you guys like to play if you, if you play Animal Crossing and if you time travel or not. Ready to go. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go in. No, there's not really a good transition shade. I guess I'm gonna go in with this purpley color. I don't really know if this is meant to be used as a blending shade, but it's fine. I'm just gonna pop that in the crease. Ooh, that's a nice color. Okay, yeah, it's not picking up like a shimmer on the eyes. That actually looks quite matte. I think it's sort of a little bit satiny, but that can be really, really beautiful as a blending shade. Lovely, that's very pleasant. Definitely going on lighter than it looks in the pan. I feel like that's kind of typical for a lot of like luxury shadows. I'm gonna do something quite simple today. Obviously this is a pretty simple neutral palette anyway. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with that kind of darker brown shade and I'm just gonna take that on the outer corner. Interesting, it's definitely picking up a lot lighter than you would think. This one you can see a little bit more of the shimmer coming through, I think. But again, it's not like a super strong metallic, it's more of a satin. So I think it still works in the crease. I could see somebody who likes to do their makeup quite quickly like this because it is pretty easy to blend. You don't get a lot of like harsh lines or anything like that. Kind of blowing it out a little bit far, you know, just to, just for funsies. Okay, so this palette is kind of typical of your like super luxury high-end palettes. Um, it's quite gently pigmented. I do want to try this shade though. We'll see how that one looks. Um, but yeah, it's quite gently pigmented, but the shadows are easy to work with, kind of easy to blend, very soft. They give you that kind of editorial feel. Uh, I would not buy this in a million years because it's so expensive, um, but it is pretty and it's nice and the packaging is quite beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna try, I do wanna try that bronzy shade, but I wanna try something else first, so I might layer them. I'm gonna try this uh, Giorgio Armani Eyes to Measure, Mes Eyes to Measure, oh my gosh. Eyes to Mesmer, Mesmer, <laughs> dear Lord. Uh, it's their eye tint, okay? That's what it is. Um, I don't even know if that's name. Quite a few of these brands are not cruelty free, by the way. I will have them listed in below what they are. I don't think Armani is. So, um, but these are just nice little eye toppers. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on. Ooh, that's quite pretty. And then I think I'm just gonna tap it in with my finger. And that's a very pretty kind of wet editorial look to the eye. I quite like that. I think that this would be a really pretty just kind of one shadow look too to just kind of like slap on for that really like model off duty type of look. That's what I feel like a liquid shadow, unless you're doing like full glitter glam, but this is the type of liquid shadow that I love because it gives such a different look than you can get with a typical powder shadow. Cause otherwise I'm like, what is the, like why would you do the extra step or buy the extra product? I feel like it kind of sets down nicely too. And from what I can tell, it's not picking up on itself too badly when I'm layering it too. But yeah, that's nice. I don't think I want to put that bronzy shade on over top of this. I quite like this sort of rosy toned look that's happening. So I think maybe I'll just swatch this. Oh, it feels quite dry actually. I know my hands are super dry. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. It's really more of almost a topper shade than it is like a full metallic. So maybe I will tap like just a little bit on top of this 
Oh, that's quite pretty. Yeah, it's not what you would expect, but look at the way the light, ooh. It's definitely what, not what you would expect from seeing it in the pan. You expect it to be kind of a metallic, but it's really more of just kind of a glittery topper shade, which can be nice. Let's just pop a little of that. Ooh, I like that in the inner corner. And I'm gonna cover it up with concealer, but yeah. So this palette definitely isn't like a super pigmented pack a punch type of thing. It's very, very soft. Um, it's very kind of gently pigmented, very subtle. Great for like a model off duty or kind of editorial look. Um, but it's definitely not something that's gonna give you a lot of pigment. It's also something that I think is probably only going to work on light to medium skin tones. Um, the shadows just don't really pack a, a punch um, to work on deeper skin tones. So that's something to keep in mind. Not that I really think anyone should consider buying this because, again, it's so expensive. But, you know, if you are feeling like a bougie bitch, that, that, is, my, that is my review of this product. One thing that I don't like about putting shimmers in the crease is that sometimes, like, the light will reflect weirdly in like areas like this and it'll make it look patchy um especially on camera and stuff so i'm just gonna try to stamp i think i am gonna do a little bit of liner feeling it i don't think i'm gonna do a liquid though i'm just gonna do like a little tight line and then a little smudgy smudgy type thing i think that's the move for today i'm gonna take this theata london wonder wand thing this is not a new product this is just Something I had, I cannot do this while filming. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so I just added like a little, little baby, not even a wing, I just like kind of smudged some liner on the lash line and dragged it out a little bit and I cleaned up the shadow just a bit and um, yeah. So we're gonna move on to the face. This is the Marc Jacobs Youth Quake. It's a retexturizing gel, so it's supposed to kind of smooth and supposedly exfoliate. I don't really know supposed to make your skin look nice so let's just give it a whirl okay. it's just sort of like a thicker cream hmm, hmm, hmm. I think it's meant to be used under makeup but you could use it as like a skincare product too is what I understand oh that's quite nice it feels just kind of like a moisturizer it's just super nice and Feels very hydrating, actually. It's different than I expected. I thought it was gonna be more like um, silicone-y. Mm, that's nice, my skin feels nice. It feels a little bit tacky, which can sometimes be a good thing for makeup. <clears throat> foundation, so I'm gonna try out the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This obviously is a very hyped up product. I have never tried it. I have the shade 3.75. Hopefully it's going to work for me right now. I think it should be fine. Um, and I'm just gonna go in with a little brush. This is a four collection full coverage foundation brush. A little pink tone just because I have the self tanner on right now. Um, but I think it'll be fine. Oh, that looks quite nice. Actually a little bit's going a long way. I feel like it is sort of drying down quite quickly. I'm gonna go in with a sponge. It's clinging a little bit on my nose, but my nose is quite dry right now. Yeah, I definitely see why people like this foundation. It looks very skin-like, pretty like light to medium coverage, but it did definitely tone down the redness, as you can see. That's nice. I like that color, too. I think it's actually pretty good right now. All right, I think I'm going to do the same application method because this isn't really a, you know, scientific foundation test. This is just playing around. Yeah, I kind of like this application method of the brush and then going on top of the sponge. Okay, that's quite nice. I definitely understand why people like this foundation. It does look quite skin-like and pretty decent coverage. I would say it's probably about a medium coverage. Um, and yeah, it looks quite nice. I'm very happy with it. Quite lovely. I wouldn't say it's like super dewy, but there definitely is like a little bit of a glow to it and it's not like, it's not mattifying my skin really, so I think if you had an oilier skin type, it would look quite glowy on you, but on me, it just kind of looks like a nice natural satin finish. Lovely. Okay, we're gonna go on to concealer. I'm gonna try out the Benefit Boeing concealer, or Boeing concealer, I always say Boeing. <laughs> not Boeing. Boeing, like Boeing, Boeing. 
concealer. This is our Cakeless Concealer. I know that Jessica Braun really likes this and I've heard a couple other people say they really like it too. I feel like I'm always on the hunt for a good concealer because like, one, I have really dark circles so I need something with good coverage but I also have super dry skin and very dry under eyes so most stuff that is good coverage is on the more matte side and it tends to look really, really crusty under there. And then other ones like the Tarte Creases Concealer, I've been liking that one, but that one is very emollient and it does tend to crease a little bit and make my mascara run. So hopefully this is somewhere in the middle. Let's just take a look at it. I have the shade one, definitely quite a light shade. I don't love a super, super bright under eye, but this actually might be, this might be fine. So I'm just gonna do kind of a, a little bit right there. And I am gonna blend it out right away. I usually let my concealer sit, but I just don't want it. Like if it's one of those ones that dries quickly, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through that. Um, I think I am gonna use my little brush to start. Whoa, good coverage. Yeah, it's definitely on the lighter side, so I'm gonna bring it down on the cheekbone a little bit. Mm, it does look pretty, pretty dang matte. I have to say. Ooh, that's very bright. <laughs> Holy moly, this is definitely quite a bright concealer. I think, I know the shade range is pretty limited in this, so I don't know if I could find a shade that's like a little bit darker, but not crazy dark. It actually doesn't look bad under the eyes. We'll have to see how it wears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is fairly matte, I, I will say. So I don't know if this is gonna be forgiving on my under eyes or not. Okay, so so far I definitely don't think this looks bad. It's definitely quite matte. It has dried down. Um, the coverage is nice and it's definitely very, very brightening. I think once it's, once it's blended out, it doesn't look too weird. I think I might try to build it up just a teeny, teeny bit more. Definitely has a little bit of a yellow undertone as well, which I don't mind. I think I'm just gonna try to build it up just like the tiniest bit definitely kind of stays in place. It does not like blend away, which can be a good thing. It is looking a little bit dry. Not horrible, just a little bit. Okay, so right now I don't hate it. I like the coverage. I do think it's a little bit on the more matte side, which I don't love. I feel like I do have to put, I think I'll put a little bit down the center of my nose just to kind of like make it even with the rest of my face, you know? Okay, before I finish up the face, I think I'm gonna go back in and finish up the eyeballs. And I'm gonna take that darker brown shade and just do a little, little zhuzh under the lower lash line. And then I think I am gonna take this orangey shade here and I'll just take a little bit on the inner corner. And then let's take a little bit of that gold topper shade on top. Okay, now I'm gonna try a mascara. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Eyes, what is it? Or Legendary Lashes 2 Mascara. I've heard nothing but good things about this mascara and I genuinely hope they're all true because that would be fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little eyelash curler, do a little curl. Ooh, fresh. Alrighty, let's see see about this. Okay, that's, that is beautiful. Oh, it looks, oh, it looks so nice. That's lovely. I am, I'm quite impressed. That looks really nice. <laughs> okay. It definitely, it gives volume, but it's not like in your face. It's so, that's real pretty. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, kind of trying to block out some of the light so it's not so bright, but that mascara looks really nice. It's very sort of, um, like, I don't know, wispy and spidery, but like not in a bad way. I don't really know. I'm gonna try to do a second coat after I curl. Yeah, that's quite pleasant. It's not honestly the most volumizing mascara ever, but there's definitely like, I think what it is is that it looks, there's volume, there's length, but the lashes still look defined. They don't look too like clumpy or over the top mascara. They look quite nice. 
and yeah, I enjoy that. I bet with a lash primer, magnifique. That's what I think. I think this would look so good with the lash primer. Okay, so I don't have a new bronzer to try. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of the Fenty Matchstick in Mocha. I think I wanna do all cream products since my face is looking a bit matte. And I'm just gonna swirl it on this brush here. I like to keep my bronzer rather lifted so it doesn't like pull my face down. I'm gonna take a little across the bridge of the nose too. I like that little zhuzhing. It definitely makes it look more kind of like a natural bronze. And then I am just gonna go over it with a touch of the powder Fenty bronzer just to kind of set everything. I'm gonna try out this from RMS. It's their Living Luminizer. It's a little cream highlight. And this is in the shade, it just says Living Luminizer. It's supposed to be like a very wet, dewy looking one. I'm super excited. I'm gonna rub my little thingy in there and tap it on. Yeah, very subtle, but it does look nice. I could see this being a great kind of no makeup makeup product or like if you're not wearing anything else to just tap it on. Cause it does definitely like that side looks kind of flat and that side you can definitely see a glow, but it's not, it's not really recognizable as a highlight, but it definitely kind of, it just like livens up the skin a little bit. I definitely like when I'm doing more glam, I definitely do like something with a bit more punch to it, but this is nice and I could definitely see like if you're somebody that doesn't really like to look like you're wearing makeup, this being a really, really great product. I'm definitely gonna try this like on days if I'm not wearing any makeup and I just want like a little something something. I think that could be quite, quite nice. All right, moving on to blush. I have another sort of cream product. This is the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur brush. Blush, not brush, blush. Bare, Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blush. It's quite pretty. So this is sort of like um, like a hybrid product. I know you're supposed to use your finger with this. It's sort of like in between a powder and a cream. It feels kind of like the um, the ColourPop ones, you know? But I'm just gonna tap that. Oh, that's quite a bright color. It's okay, we like blush here. Yeah, it's definitely, it doesn't have like a super dewy look, but it is sitting nicely on the skin. And I definitely think like a finger is the way to go. See, I do feel like after that blush, like the RMS product has completely disappeared. So this might be a, might be one to do like as a last step. So I'm just gonna kind of tap that in. Yeah, that blush is quite nice. This color is very bright on me, on my skin tone. This is Mauve Sunrise, but it's very pretty. I do feel like it might be a teeny bit patchy. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with this little Living Luminizer thing because I definitely want the, the glow to shine through. Yeah, this might be one, I usually do my highlight um, before blush, but this might be one that you want to do after just so it can really shine, so to speak. So, I have this, um, this is a lip balm. It's by Jouer. Um, I just think it's really cute and I love the packaging, so I want to try it. I'm pretty sure that this is just clear, um, but that's the vibe. Okay. It definitely feels nice. I think it does have a little bit of a pink tint to it. Um, it's hard to say whether or not that it's super hydrating only having it on for like three seconds, but it does feel nice and it is super cute. However, I definitely don't think it's necessary to spend that much on a lip balm, I say as I wipe it off. But I do wanna try this bolder lip color. We have the NARS. These are the Velvet Matte Lip Crayons. These are super popular. In Consuming Red. Do need to exfoliate my lips, but it will. And I'm kind of sharing it out with that balm underneath. I think you can definitely go in with these more pigmented, but I'm just gonna kinda of tap it in. I also feel like I need more hydration, so I'm gonna put on my Laneige. Okay, I really like that lip product kind of sheared out. Um, I will definitely try it again more like opaquely, but I really like this sort of sheer, juicy, blurred type of 
look today. <laughs> and I think this is the final look. Oh, I am gonna spray a little bit of this Farsali Rose Gold Mist. Um, this is what I've been using for quite a while. I, it's okay. <laughs> it's not, yeah, again, anything to write home about. I definitely think you can find better dewy setting sprays at the drugstore, like the NYX dewy setting spray. Flower Beauty has one, um, the Catrice one. So, save your money. Since we're here, let's try a new perfume. This is the Seven Virtues Grapefruit and Lime perfume. I know they're super famous for their vanilla woods. This one's very, ooh, it's very citrusy. Oh, that's, that's so nice. I don't think this is one I would wear all the time, but it's nice, it makes me feel like I'm outside in the garden or like having brunch on the balcony and just, hmm. I like that, you definitely have to like citrus and you have to like almost a cleaner scent, which normally I don't love, but I don't know, quite nice. Ooh, ooh. All right, everyone, this is the final look. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do a wear test. It's 4 p.m. right now, so I don't think it would be that helpful for you anyway. And plus, this was just kind of for fun to try out some new little products. Let me give you a little rundown. Um, the palette, I think, is really pretty. It definitely gives that very kind of like model -y, soft, glam type of thing. The shadows are very easy to work with. Um, they're not super pigmented. They are, I think, meant to be a little bit softer. So again, I don't think this is gonna work on all skin tones. Um, and definitely this is a high price tag. I think this is like $80 or something crazy for like a four pan shadow. So not worth it in my opinion, but it is quite pretty and I will hang on to it um, in its little, its little pouch. Um, what else did I use? Oh, um, I quite like this, the Giorgio Armani Eye Tint. Um, I think that this gives a very nice wet look. It gives something different to the eyes, and that's generally what I look for in a liquid shadow is something that I can achieve, that I can't achieve with a pressed shadow, and I think this does that. Um, it's not like the Stila shadows. It's not super, super glittery. It's more of a subtle, kind of wet, shimmery look, but I quite like it. Um, this is in the shade 44, by the way. Um, the Hourglass Brow Pencil, it's okay. I do like the shape. Um, I think I like it a little better than some other brow pencils, but it's honestly nothing too spectacular. It reminds me a lot of the Benefit Precisely My Brow, just a little bit. In terms of formula, it's a little bit stiffer, um, but it still does move around. So I think it's okay. I'll use it up, but it's nothing spectacular. <laughs> um, I'm like forgetting everything I use. Oh, the Luminous Silk Foundation. I quite like this. Um, I think it, one, it did oxidize just a little bit, um, but I think it looks quite nice on the skin. It looks very much like a satin natural finish on me. Um, I will definitely continue to use it, especially throughout the summer, because I think it's, it's quite nice. So yeah, is it worth the enormous price tag? I don't know. I think there are other foundations, like the NYX Born to Glow is beautiful that you can get a similar effect at a cheaper price, but I definitely do understand the hype around this one and why it's so popular because it is a really beautiful foundation. Um, the concealer. Let's look at how crusty my under eyes are looking. Um, I don't love this one. It's a little bit too matte for my liking and yeah, I'm not loving how it looks underneath me. Uh, underneath me eyes. I'm not loving how it looks underneath my eyes. It's just a little bit too matte for me, um, but I do like the coverage and it does, it's definitely brightening. So if you're looking for something more matte and full coverage, you might enjoy this. I just don't think it's great for me personally. Um, the mascara. This is quite nice. There's something very classic about the way it makes your lashes look. Um, it's not, I guess it's, it's not, you know, mind blowing again. But it is nice. I think it definitely gives length and volume without being super clumpy or over the top. Um, it's just a really pretty feathery look to the lashes. I quite like it. Um, I'll have to keep trying it. With mascaras, usually a first impression isn't enough. You have to like keep trying it and see how it dries out and all of that stuff. So I'll definitely continue to use this and see what I think of it. Um, but so far, I quite like it. Um, RMS. This is an interesting little product. 
Um, it's definitely very subtle, but it is pretty on the skin and it definitely gives a very natural glow to the skin. So if that's what you're looking for, then you might like this. Personally, I would go for something more like the Hollywood Flawless Filter over this because that one has a little bit more punch to it. But I could see if you're somebody that doesn't really wear makeup or wants to get ready super quickly in the morning or just wants like a little bit of glow without putting on any makeup, I could definitely see um, liking this. And I will continue to use this up and it is, it is quite pretty on the skin. Um, this, is, this is very fun. <laughs> um, I think if you want sort of a cream blush without the stickiness, you would like this because it does sit very nicely on the skin, but it's not quite so dewy and it's not quite so sticky. Personally, I like the sticky glowy blushes, but that's just me. Um, but it is quite pretty. I think this, um, this blush is quite a bold color and I don't really have one quite like it in my collection, so I will continue to use this. Um, and it's quite fun. It's fun to little, do a little bounce. Okay, <laughs> um, the lip balm. It's a lip balm. There's not much to say about this. Um, I think it's something, again, lip balm's something that you kind of have to use multiple times to really see if it really does anything for your lips, but I think the packaging is pretty and I think this would be cute just like in your purse. Not that we're using purses or going anywhere right now, but you know, one can dream. So I think it's okay. I don't think it's worth picking up. Uh, the NARS Velvet Matte lip pencil. Um, I like how this feels. Of course, I sort of watered it down with hydrating products and sheared it out so it's not quite at its full opacity or like really the formula in its purest form right now so I'll have to keep trying it but um, it's a pretty color and it feels nice. So that's it. I think that's everything, right, that we tried. Oh, and the perfume. Quite nice. A little bit different of a scent. Very citrusy good for summer, but it's a very specific scent. Like I wouldn't order it online. Wait until we can go into store again, so. Okay, that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun. This little bougie try on here. Um, I'm gonna go check on my animals and um, I will see you all again soon. Okay, bye. <laughs> Love me, love me, say that you love me, hold me, hold me. I think I went a little overblown, overblown. It's a retexturizing screen. Like it's not really recognizable. <laughs>